Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the game 6 of the BBL um, Super Coach season in which we saw the Sydney Thunder um, end up losing by 20 runs to the Brisbane Heat 151 to 131. So that was uh, I guess a good result for um, most teams um, given that it means that for the Sixers and the Brisbane Heat they sort of uh, get a game ahead of most people as I don't think any other team has actually had a result go um, in their favour as in a win they've had just um, yeah Sixers and the Heat are the only two teams to actually win a game out of it and everyone's played already so they've sort of made a gap on at least the Renegades and the other teams that have um, lost a game in the Hurricanes, Thunder and Stars alongside the Renegades I mean the Scorchers and Strikers are half a game back on those guys alongside another um, a win as well so um, there's definitely a gap being created there with the Heat the uh, Sixers I expect the Scorchers to bounce back um, against this, uh, I, get, I believe it's the Stars tonight, and that recap will probably be a no camera recap uh, as I'm having a surgery, so I'll be um, a little bit probably uh, it'll probably just be a voice over the the top of the on top of the screen, but anyway, at least I'll get some video out to you hopefully if I'm feeling better. But um, let's get, I guess, into this video. So before we get into the video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, especially with being some awkward times to upload with the test match being on, etc. and stuff like that. There may be some earlier recordings um, or releases, I should say. And anyway, so let's jump into this video. So as you can see here, uh, Sydney Thunder, um, the Heat, um, Swepo, man of the match, and he just, that was a big miss, I guess. So let's go to the heat batting and let's bring it up here. We got it here as well, and we can bring it up there. So you have the stats. Um, so first off, um, Josh Brown. I think he's gonna. If we show here, I think he's gonna get dropped. To be honest with you, fourteen off seventeen, two sixes. I just don't value that too much. And he was hogging the strike. I mean, he got out at the end of the fourth, not even the end of the fourth over, and faced seventeen balls. So Munro would face six. He wasn't rotating the strike. I know it was a slowish ground, but and it was a lowish wicket. But 14 off 17, including two sixes in the first over, I don't think it was too valuable him up the top. And I think that Renshaw should probably jump up there or even Sam Billings and uh, drop Brown for someone else for another batter and probably Pearson and move Walter up to five or something like that and Pearson at six. I think Anessa should probably be seven. That's probably the scenario they should go for, but that maybe is just me being a little bit biased given my... Um, super coach players that I currently have for the Heat, but I just generally think Josh Brown just is not going to work. I think he is going to be one of those one-season type of guys that seem to have worked at one season, but I think some teams are starting to figure him out a little bit as he is very leg-side dominant and doesn't really seem to have much of an offside. So if you just bolt full and wide outside off stump, he doesn't really seem to be able to play there. Munro, 46 off 33. He was the captain of the round, definitely. Over, I believe he gained 85 points on Michael Nisa, as we will get to that. So, Mun uh, um, Brown, I believe, just got a 14. Don't think he didn't, yeah, didn't do anything in the field. And then you have Munro here get a 46. And then only a 10 strike rate bonus, as you see here, 139. He almost got that one. If he'd gotten another run and faced 33 balls, he would have gotten that 140. Um, strike rate bonus, which would have been another um, five points, but still 46 off 33 with a 10 strike rate bonus gets him to uh, 56 off 33, and I believe he is making, I believe 16k or something like that, 17k. No, no, I think he's making 23k off this. So he is um, in the move there. Obviously, um, having only I think 101 break even and hitting 190 means that he's going to go up roughly. 23k given that it's roughly um 259 um 259 point 259 cash per point roughly is the magic number at the moment um or at least what i've calculated i have it between 255 and 260 somewhere in there with my uh spreadsheet which will keep you guys updated when i go away um Mick Sweeney, 29 off 27, he just never got going, and what the 1 6 as well, no strike rate bonus, so just a clean 29 there, and I don't believe he had any fielding input. No fielding input for him, just a clean 29 there, uh, moving that there. Um, and then we go on to Renshaw, 20 off 19, he did absolutely nothing. 
and it was the most pointless innings I've ever seen. So 20 off 19 for him. And I don't think he did anything else. No, just a clean 20 for him. So that was just the most pointless innings. And it really limited the fact of uh, Billings as Billings really got stranded, basically. He was like 20 off 12. And then Renshaw just put the brakes on for an over or two. And it really just stopped their, their charge, basically. As you can see here, they faced 5.1 overs for... 5.1 overs for 40 isn't that bad. But that was mostly Sam Billings doing it. And then you can just see a little bit of... Paul Walter obviously did, um, did his job a little bit, but just in the end, it was just not... Um, it was sort of a compounding effect of Renshaw not scoring runs, which meant it piled pressure on Billings. Billings got out, and some other guys just didn't really fire with the bat later on. Um, so Billings ended up with a one two seven strike rate, which got him a five-pointer, but he, could, he was on 25 points when he crossed it. He was 21 off 12 and then had two off six just because the pressure started to mount. Paul Walter, six off two, got a big six. Um, we'll see with when he, when we get to the bowling in there, but um, Paul Walter made up for it with the ball with a big uh, couple wickets and strike rate bonus. Um, Zebra Bartlett didn't actually face the ball. Michael Nisa, two off two, just got out, uh, trying to hit over the top and just trying to score runs late. He could easily ended up two, zero, two, five, ten, somewhere, anywhere within there, and that would have been good points, but I mean extra points, but two. To show that he scored 105 across the two weeks with um, only facing two balls and bowling five overs just sort of, sort of shows the capability of him. And we'll see if he's um, if he's needed in the trade plans when we do them, um, as I should be able to have videos out for that, given that um, I'll be the test match elongates the sort of break that we have, um, which should allow me to get some videos out, as I should be fine by then. Um, and then Spencer Johnson hit a shot first ball or second ball, I think it was, to the rope. And then and then I think they ran a leg by off the last ball or something like that. Or it might have been wide off the last ball um, or second last ball. And he ended up four off two, so four points for Spencer Johnson, which was basically all that he did. And then we move on to the Thunder Bowling and Daniel Sands, two overs, number 25. New bowling action, and it just is not working. As simple as that, um, he's lost pace. He's a little bit more accurate, but lost a lot of base. He's lost 5 to 10 Ks at least, and that's just impacting him. Um, and he's just not bowling well enough, as simple as that. Chris Green, 4 overs, 1 for 30. We'll see him when he gets with the bat as well. But, um, yeah, 4 overs, 1 for 30, did really well. That would get him uh, 5 bonus, uh, 25, 33 with the ball, I suspect. If we go up here, because he did quite well with the bat as well. Uh, 7 dot balls, one of them would have been a league by. And then the, yeah, 32 with the ball is not uh, the worst, to be honest with you. And he had a massive impact with the bat. Uh, then you have Nathan McAndrew, three overs, number 23, just would have got five bonus there and the six there. So he ended up with 11, I believe. Uh, McAndrew here, uh, five, five, 10. He had a catch as well. So 10 with the ball, 10 in the field, and 13 with the bat there for him. Let me make this actually a little bit bigger for you guys. There you go. So you can see it a little bit better, but uh, McAndrew ended up with a 33, which is still all right, but not the greatest. Hatcher, three overs, one for 16. He would have actually dined out here, I'm pretty sure. If we go up here, 44 points for him, um, and that was 41 points with the ball, which is a fair effort for him. He may be a look-in for the double as um, as we really try and figure out the bowlers for the double. Um, as we'll see here, they didn't do terribly well this game, uh, but you've got Tanvir Sanger and Green that are probably going to be up there for the double. Um, and you're probably looking at getting in four guys. I would stay away from Ollie just because he's a pure batter, even though what he does, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then you've got Zahir Khan, who I, uh, Zamin Khan, Zaman Khan, um, who I believe leaves in the double, so that will negate him picking up him. Uh, Tanvir Sanger, four overs, three for 21. We saw what he did, 94. Um, got out first ball or something like that with the bat, which we'll get to. But um, 94 with the ball is huge. He's going up, I believe, 16, 17K, somewhere around there. Um, and he'll tick over the 100K. So basically, if you didn't start him, you're not going to be able to grab him here because he's going to be so hard. You, it's hard to grab a non-playing double guy for over 100K. And also the fact that... Um, just that he is a 100k is quite hard to get to given that you're probably going to have to give up two good guys because you're trying to get that short trade in 
um, so you're going to have to give up quite a lot. And Tanvir Sanger is probably not going to be on those guys' wish list if they... Oh, well, he's going to be on the wish list, just not on the gettable uh, list, I guess. Then you have Zaman Khan, 4 overs, 2 for 31. He looked really good. Just sucks with his availability that I believe he leaves halfway through their double. And because I think he's contracted for four games. So that really just does negate any use of him. So we'll see how he goes. But I think he's going to be a miss this year just due to fixturing and availability. Moving on to the Thunder game, uh, Thunder side of it. Cam Bancroft, 25 of 19. Looked decent, but then just got out to Swepo just uh, sliding one through. It was Swepo's day yet again, as you can see. Uh, 25 off 19, 131. So he got the 10 and the 5, 25 there. So 35 for Bancroft. And um, yeah, you can see here 35. Then you had Alex Hales get out first ball. Uh, Michael Nisa getting the 20 points there. You take that. I think it was Brian that took this catch. Uh, Buckingham that took that catch. But obviously that's ne uh, negligible for super coach purposes as they don't count. Um, and yeah, got our first ball, Alex Hales. I just don't think he'll be of value, and he's dropping massively in this price. Um, if we look at his um, initial price, it is 125k. He he got zero points, so his break even of 41. That will drop him 10k, and he all might he might almost just be valuable in the double if he's like 70k or something like that, 80k. As his pro new break even is going to be like 65 or something like that, or 60. Um, and if he gets another duck, he will be he'll drop below pretty much um, 100k, and then he could easily be somewhere around that 95 or some uh, range around his double um, or the buy-in for his double, which could be an interesting call. Gilks three off ten just doesn't look good, and yeah, looked all over the shop. Almost got um, LBW, but it was just going over just because of how far he was batting out of his crease. But in the end, he just didn't play well. Ollie, 35 off 30, looked all right, but just got um, held up in the end and then tried to hit one out, basically. And I believe he got caught at um, uh, sort of a deep mid-wicket area, I believe, from memory, as it was Michael Neese's, one of his good catches. And so 35 off 30 just gets the 35 points. Um, and I don't, and I believe he took a catch as well to get to 45 I believe um, two catches in the end to get to 55 points, which is a good output. I mean, on his non on non double week to get 55 points and go up four or five k for him should be fine. Um, and he could be one that you look at, but I don't think you will look at in the uh, Thunder double. Then you have Alex Ross. He just looked horrible, and Paul Walter did his uh, did his job. This might have been the no. This was the really good catch. I'm trying to figure out where did Ollie how did Ollie hit out now that I know that that was the really good deep mid wicket catch. Um, but he just got out to Nessa. Uh, but yeah, Paul Walter and Nessa combining was 41 points, that delivery, which was good. Daniel Sams uh, pretty much summed up, um, his dismissal pretty much summed up the, the Thunder game, to be honest with you. Just it's missed a straight one, <laughs> as simple as that. And pretty much summed up the weekend for me being so close, but um, not really there, especially with sweeps and knees. Ended up getting, I think, like 70 points again or something ridiculous like that here. If we look at Ness, uh, Swepson, 69 points for him, which was just an unreal output for what he did. Um, then you've got, um, so we had Chris Green as well. He did really well, and he is one that you are going to look for in the Thunder Doubles um, in the round four and round nine. I think you should look at that, and I think he should be on your wish list being that he's just scored 82 and picked up only one wicket break, even of 51. He will be probably one of the more expensive Thunder guys to get in in the double. But, I mean, if you if you can transfer someone like a Nessa or someone like that, depending on... I will have to look at my spreadsheet to see who we don't really want to, at that point um, with the doubles surrounding them in the three or four rounds. Um to go after that round four, so sort of that round five, six, seven, eight, whoever has doubles in those five, six, and seven rounds, um, we will probably stay clear of trading out of those, those guys at that point, uh, but trading maybe out of like Tom Curran or Philippi to um, to the likes of uh, Chris Green could be the target. Mick Andrew, 13 off nine, and then the Walter Nessa double hit, it, hit another one, I guess, another 41 point delivery there for me. 13 off 9 for McAndrew, did all right. Hatcher, 3 off 6, Bowl Bartlett and Dan Sanger. 
um, a golden duck bowled off Bartlett. Um, Zaman Khan hit a six off three, hit a boundary, just over third man, sort of, over the short third. And that went and ran away for four, and they got bowled out in 19 overs for 131. Now, looking at the scorecard, and you'll see the just frustration that I have at this point is yes, I like that um, Paul Walter bowled uh, four overs, two for 22. That was just amazing output. He ended up, I believe, 71 points, so hitting his break even. Nessa, two overs, one for 13. I think he is still suffering a little bit from the. Um, the injury that made him pull out the soreness that made him pull out of the PM's 11 game, which sort of sucks. Bartlett got the four, which I would have much rather than Nessa get the four, to be honest with you. Just getting the strike, uh, the economy rate bonus would have been, even just a 15 here would have been huge and closed the gap to um, to Munro potentially to somewhere around that 65 point range, but it's sat at 85, I guess. Um, for, for Nessa to get 105 points from five overs, two, two balls with the bat, just shows his scoring potential, and when he gets fit, I think he'll be fine. So he'll be lined up for the Brisbane Heat doubles that come in the future. I believe they have another double somewhere down the line. But look, four over three for 35. He ended up doing pretty well, to be honest with you. 81 points there. Just got away with cleaning up the tail and ended up picking up something like 54, 53 points in that last over, I think. Um, but he got hit around in this in the power play over, which negated any stri- uh, economy rate bonus, which would have really been annoying if he'd gotten that. Spencer Johnson, two overs, think he's suffering a little bit, so I would have liked to have seen Spencer Johnson's over that he bowled in the power surge given to Michael Nessa, to be honest with you. And Spencer Johnson didn't look the best, to be honest with you. Swepo, four overs, two for 26. He looks back. I mean, it was his best score since um, BBL 09, the 93 that he made, and I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of his third best or fourth best score since BBL 09, this um, 71 he's made here. So he was just pretty good, and I mean, he bowled just two back-of-length balls on the stumps, and the batters missed it, so that's more telling on the batters, just not being up to scratch for the Thunder than Swepo probably bowling the greatest. But, I mean, he's picking up the wickets. He's the tied leading wicket taker with, um, I believe, Bartlett and also Dewarshus. So he's obviously doing his role and doing it really well. So just annoyed that he missed, I missed out on him. But there is potential that we go for him, given his break even of potentially minus 60. Kuderman, three overs, two for 18. He did his job. I just don't know why they didn't bowl um, Michael Nesser at the death. As Kuderman did pick up a wicket, but he looked so easy. He looked easier to hit around. Chris Green just... Declined a single and then got out the next ball, which sort of helped Kuhneman, obviously, two dot balls that he would have gotten and the wicket. And then we talked about Walter, as well as just um, Nessa and Swepson, and also, I believe, did um, Kuhneman take a catch in this game? I don't know if he did. Let me just check. The easy way here is to check. No, he didn't. But yeah, as you can see, Nessa, three catches, only two, and Swepson, one, really bumped up those guys' scores. But anyway, the Thunder lose out to the Brisbane Heat by 20 runs and sort of ends um, an all right round for me. I'm still pretty happy with it. I'm currently 11.03 with one game to go, so should crack hopefully the 1,200, which I think will be a good barrier given effectively two rain outs. And hopefully I'll be gaining roughly, well, at the moment I've gained something like 25K through cash then hopefully that can push up towards that 55 60k if Connolly and also Jai Richardson fire but anyway that is the video and I'll see you guys sometime soon for the next video bye guys